Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Uh, uh, as the Prime Minister said, I'm going to give you a brief update around the uh, economic support responses, and I'm also in a position to give a, a, a brief update on the grid emergency uh, notice uh, that was issued earlier today by uh, Transpower as well. Uh, we know that from our recent experience that the best economic response continues to be a strong health response. What that's meant for New Zealand is that we have had our economy recover significantly faster than many other countries in the world. Uh, our GDP has returned to pre-COVID levels. Uh, employment is up, unemployment is down, businesses and export growth continue to be strong. In comparison to the rest of the world, our strong public health response has led to a strong economic response. And we will apply similar principles now to deal with the uncertainty that we are facing. Uh, we know we can do this, uh, we've done this before and we can do it again. Therefore, in terms of our uh, economic responses and consultation with the Minister of Social Development, the Honourable Carmel Cipollone, we are going to trigger the income support mechanisms that we have. The Prime Minister has indicated to you just shortly before this that Auckland is likely to be in alert level four for seven days. It is seven days that triggers uh, the uh, wage subsidy scheme, and in order to give certainty to our businesses and our workers, that is what we will be doing. Um, eligible employers anywhere in the country can apply for the wage subsidy scheme if they expect a loss of 40% of revenue as a result of the alert level increase. Uh, I want to note that the wage subsidy rates have been increased to reflect increases in wage costs since the scheme was first used in March 2020. Businesses will be eligible for $600 per week per full-time equivalent employee and $359 per week per part-time employee. Uh, the wage subsidy scheme will be paid as a two-week lump sum and otherwise core settings for the scheme will remain the same as they have previously. And we'll put out more details on all of this tomorrow. I'm sure you can understand we've made this decision uh, rapidly uh, today. Also, eligible businesses anywhere in the country can apply for the resurgence support payment. So this is the payment that applies whatever alert levels uh, increases we see if they incur a loss of 30% of revenue as a result of that alert level increase. To remind you, the resurgence support payment is worth up to $1,500 uh, per employee plus plus $400 up to a max, sorry, it's worth $1,500 plus $400 per full-time employee up to a maximum of 50 full-time employees. So this was the scheme that we had in place with the recent Wellington uh, alert level change. It is different from the wage subsidy scheme. It does not have to be applied directly towards wages. This can be used for other costs that businesses have. Therefore, businesses are able to avail themselves of both the wage subsidy scheme and uh, the resurgent support scheme. Uh, businesses will be able to apply for the wage subsidy scheme at the Work and Income website and the Resurgence Support Scheme at the Inland Revenue work, uh, website. At this stage, we'll be looking to open applications for the wage subsidy support scheme from Friday, uh, this Friday, the 20th of August, um, and we expect payments would be normally be able to reach applicants within three days of applying. Uh, Inland Revenue is working to open the resurgence support payment for applications as soon as possible, but likely early next week. Can I just note at this point our thanks to, again, the staff at the Ministry of Social Development in particular and Inland Revenue. They do have done a magnificent job in dealing with these schemes in the past and they are ready to go to get things going. But obviously it does take a few days uh, to set things up and that's the process that we're moving into now. I also want to note, uh, of course, that the Leave Support Scheme and the Short Term Absence Scheme, both which are designed for people who either have COVID or have had to take time off in order to get test results, are both still in operation and still available for people uh, to be able to access. Uh, as I said, we'll have more information over the next 24 hours on some of the detail of that, but we wanted to provide certainty today to people so that they know. I will just talk about the grid emergency notice, if you like, and then we'll come to uh, questions uh, on on the uh, uh, income support measures. So as uh, most of you will be aware, uh, Transpower issued a grid emergency notice uh, this evening. This was as a result of a conductor wire falling from a tower around State Highway 7 in the Wicker Pass area in North Canterbury. I want to note there's no indication that anyone was harmed uh, when this occurred. Uh, what this has meant is that uh, it has triggered the need for that notice. Um, clearly those of you who will be aware
aware of the significant contribution South Island power makes to the powering of the North Island. Uh, it means that this reduced uh, almost by half the amount of power that was able to come across the, the Cook Strait cable. That is the reason for the emergency notice being issued. Uh, as you'll be aware, and there have been a number of media releases made by uh, by uh, generators tonight. They are working hard to bring on extra generation capacity. Uh, there's been an excellent response from generators and indeed from the industry more broadly, as there has from those who provide uh, power directly to consumers. Uh, for this evening, the situation appears to be stable. Um, there's been a use by uh, providers of what is called ripple control, um, so that's rather using things like uh, modulating hot water rather than there being a need for any particular power outage and thus far this evening uh, that appears to have been uh, successful. In terms of the uh, the wire itself, there are crews on site tonight. Uh, they are going to be working uh, as much as they can this evening, but as you'll possibly also understand, it's work that requires daylight, and so they'll continue that work tomorrow. Uh, at this stage, the advice I have is they, they are confident that they'll be able to uh, get that back up and running fully within the next 48 hours, hopefully earlier than that, but uh, within the next 48 48 hours. Um, as a result of that, there will be continuing work done over this uh, evening and into tomorrow to manage tomorrow evening's peak as well. Uh, and as long as there are no uh, equipment or plant failures around the country, then we're confident that we will be able to get through this. Minister, how much is, Jenna. is it really likely to be a case of a peak tomorrow when you've got the whole country staying at home using the power all day? Mm. Yeah. Look, and as I said, there's always an evening peak, and clearly we're going to have a, uh, that there. There will be, obviously, a increased load, I'm sure, during the day. Again, I am confident from the advice I have had that the industry has come on board. All the generators are looking at putting all the generation they can. We no longer have uh, the concern that we did around weeds in one of uh, Genesis's uh, plants, and so that's uh, able to operate. I believe also, even in the time we've been sitting in the press conference here tonight, that uh, the third rank in, at Huntley is going to be fired up. So I'm very confident we have the capacity to deal with the fact that, yes, this is an unfortunate coincidence with the country moving to alert level four. Do you have, um, or just let Jenna finish this. And in then terms I'll... of the economic modelling that has been done um, for, for this lockdown, I think the last thing we've done was a week at level three was going to cost $500 million. Yep. What are we looking at? So um, I'll just give you the numbers I've got here, and the scenario we're looking at with the seven days and the three days doesn't quite fit with the numbers, but you'll be able to see the range. So uh, for a week for alert level four uh, across the whole country, uh, the cost is estimated to be $1.5 billion. Uh, um, for alert level four and then alert level three in the rest of the country, um, it's around $920 million. So somewhere in that range there is what you can expect. I do think it's very important to note that while that is a significant cost to the economy, the long-run benefit of stamping COVID out now quickly is well and truly uh, eclipses any of that cost. But that's the range that um, we have at the moment. Jane. Got, you've got $5 billion left in the COVID fund. On these figures, you know, you would have wriggle room, but when, it, how much, when it gets extended, are you going to start to run into problems and have to go and borrow more? How long is it going to last? Five yeah, well, months? I've given, uh, that's, that's the economic cost to the country. That's not the cost of the scheme per se. And obviously the cost of the scheme uh, per se depends on how many people apply for it. Um, obviously, we've got around that $5 billion figure there. But I've always said that if it is necessary to borrow more money to be able to get New Zealanders through this, we'll do that. The great news is that the New Zealand economy has outperformed all of the expectations, and we are in a stronger position. Obviously, I'm not in a position today to give you the exact update on debt levels, but we're in a much stronger position than we expected to be. So New Zealand has the capacity to deal with this. We know that this approach worked for us last time. The wage subsidy scheme worked for us last time. We now also have the resurgence support payment, and I'm confident it'll do so again. So, Jason. Are, these, so are these figures just the, econo the straight econo economic loss, so you then have to add on 
the cost of any wage subsidy, any resurgence payments onto the on top of these? Well, it depends how what you want to measure, but that is that's the modelling that tells us that's the output that's lost in the economy. Um, that's it's not quite comparable to then because not all of that comes to the government, so it's not quite a comparable number in terms of saying you have to add it together. But that's not the cost of the wage subsidy scheme, that's the cost of the loss of output. Jason. Could you give us um, an indication about what this decision today means for the um, OCR review tomorrow? Is that still going to go ahead or is that on hold? Um, I, I spoke to the Reserve Bank Governor earlier this evening and got an indication from him that they will go ahead with their announcement tomorrow, but I imagine given uh, the alert level change, that's likely not to be an in-person announcement, but you'd need to ask him about and that. Fact. I mean, there were a lot of economists forecasting a bit of a rate rise. This puts a spanner in the work. Have you given any advice? I know statutory independence, that sort of jazz. But is there any sort of <laughs> guidance that you've given the, the governor in terms of I, the economic It's not my place to give the governor guidance on those matters. Bernard, did, yep. did the government consider uh, putting the uh, wage subsidy across the entire country rather than just, just for Auckland? It is available across the entire country. So the change that we made last year when we reassessed the wage subsidy scheme is that no matter where an alert level rises to alert level three or four, the wage subsidy is available across the country. What you have to demonstrate is that the alert level increase has caused the 40% reduction in revenue. Thomas. Thomas. Are there plans for further impressed supply if you, if you need to, to go to Parliament for the authority to borrow? Them? There definitely won't be a need for that. If you recall, the, I can't recall the exact number in the impressed supply bill that we did the other day, but it was a significant amount of money, and we always, as we say there, it's not a target, it's a limit, um, and we certainly gave ourselves um, sufficient space within that. Sorry, yes, we'll come down the front. Have you considered industry-specific payments? So, for instance, like hospitality, there's going to be a lot of food wastage coming out, mm. especially in Wellington right now. No, look, we haven't. Obviously, this has been a very rapid um, set of decisions. Um, one of the reasons we brought in place the resurgence support payment was a recognition for businesses that that immediate alert level change can have an effect on the business. So that's really what that's designed for. Um, that can give, and I'm thinking of some of those hospitality businesses in Wellington, they know all about it because they recently accessed it. They can give up to $21,000 to a business. So that is our way of dealing with that issue. Back on the call to grant um, I, I believe it was, and I don't think you can make a linkage between this and that particularly. Would you have, would you have, any, would you have any concerns if um, interest rates did go up? Um, and I guess the effect, the cooling effect that would have on top of this current COVID situation? As I say, it's not my practice, as you know, to comment on, on those matters. What I would say is that it's the job of the Reserve Bank to look to the medium term. As you know, that's exactly what they're asked to do. Uh, they've had throughout COVID-19 had to balance short-term issues with medium and long-term uh, objectives, and I'm sure you'll hear more from uh, the Reserve Bank about that tomorrow. Just yeah, take a couple more. Is it your assumption that you will be borrowing more money for this? At this stage, we don't need to. So in terms of, the, of, the, of what's likely, in terms of what was outlined tonight, the seven days in the Auckland area, three days in the rest of the country, we wouldn't need to. We've got more than enough money um, set aside. Uh, bear in mind that while we've got the money left over in the COVID response fund, we also have allocations for, for example, business support that have not been used. So the, the famous business finance guarantee scheme that I've stood on this podium and talked about a, a few times um, wasn't used to the extent that we expected it. So there's actually money left from earlier on that we haven't spent as well as the money we'd set aside. So no, at this point, I don't believe that's a realistic prospect. We would have to be in a period of level four for a, a long time for that to be an issue. Bernard? Would, would you, um, what would you say to those businesses thinking of taking the um, resurgence payment and the wage subsidy and whether they should pay it back immediately if this is only short term? Yeah, the, the first thing I'd say is one of the changes we made um, since we initially did this was that 
there is a much greater emphasis now on the fact that it is the alert level change that needs to have caused your revenue drop. And that, you know, following on from the report of the Auditor General and others, we will, you know, there will be more pursuit of whether or not that is an accurate uh, statement to be made. Um, I repeat what I said in the very early days of standing up here. If you make a statutory declaration to that effect and it is not true and you knew it wasn't true, that is fraud. And so that message is clear. I think what we've seen, when bear in mind we had August as well, and then we had February, uh, August last year, and then we had February this year. We've got a bit more experience, and we see that the take-up is not as high as businesses do take that time. Uh, bear in mind also the resurgent support payment um, caps out for, for uh, firms at 50 FTEs. Happened to resurgent, sorry, Jason. To the resurgent support payment. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, That's 30. I know there's a difference between the two, but we could get into the reasons, but that's a 30% reduction in revenue for the resurgent support payment. But it's not tied to wages in the way that the wage subsidy scheme is, and this is issues around things like rents and so on, which we've had in the past. Jason, I'll just take a couple more. Did you, perchance, mutter any select four-letter four words where you got the news that Transpower was happening at the same time as this um, COVID outbreak? I mean, that uh, can't have been good. Um, there might have been more than one uh, four-letter word uttered at that point. It is an unhappy coincidence. But again, as I noted, I think that partly in light of what occurred last week, um, for a different, you know, this is a very specific set of reasons around a, a particular cable uh, going down in, in the South Island. Um, I think the response has been good from what I've read tonight, from all parts of the sector, from generators, from industry, from retailers. And so, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that we're in a strong position here, but quite clearly not uh, the coincidence we were looking for this evening. Can you guarantee... Kiwis, that they're going to be able to turn on their power at home while they're stuck at home. We're doing absolutely everything we can to make that happen, and I believe that on the basis of what we've seen tonight, uh, from the response from everybody, that we're in a very strong position to give that assurance. We will in the next couple of days. Not good enough, Thank though, is it? Because if people are in lockdown, they need to be able to... Of course, Tyra, and the, and the point here is that we are doing everything we can. Um, it, you know, we lost a wire on um, a very important poll in the South Island that was not expected. Um, everybody is now doing the right thing, and tonight we're all here, the lights are on, and I'm very optimistic the same will happen. Of course it's not something that any of us would want at this situation. We'll keep everybody updated, and as long as everybody plays their part, I'm very confident there won't be a problem. Thanks, everybody. In addition to that third ranking, I yep. don't suppose you know off the top of your head any other power that's being turned on or any other parts that are being fired up? Um, off the top of my head, I don't. I don't. What I have had an assurance is that um, from all of the generators that I've seen, they're putting everything available in. So obviously the problem last week was there was available um, generation that wasn't put in. Uh, the feedback I'm seeing is that everything that is available is, and obviously um, with the third ranking coming on, that takes some time, um, but that should help deal with concerns that people might have about the coming days of this week. Well, we always want people to be careful with their consumption of energy, but no, what we're doing at the moment is managing that via the generators and via the distributors. That's what ripple control is about. But we always want people to know, I don't, I'm not saying that. People need to stay warm. They need to um, be comfortable in their homes this evening. We have a process for managing this, which takes place at the generator point of view and at the distributor point of view with the regulators on top of it. That's the process we're using. And this evening, it's working, and I'm confident it'll work tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.